Hey there! Today we're going to look at a relationship called Newton's Law of Cooling and see how we can use some calculus to represent it. Now, most of you realize, I'm sure, that if you take something hot, like say this hot water here, and uh, put it in a cup and leave it on the counter, it's going to cool down. But what you may not have thought about is exactly how that cooling happens over time. Newton's Law of Cooling says that the rate that the temperature changes for an object is proportional to the difference in temperature between the object and the surroundings. So in our case here, the rate that the temperature of the cup of water is changing at any moment depends on the difference between the temperature of the water and the temperature of the air around it. This rate is greatest at the start because at the beginning the difference in temperature is the greatest. As it cools down, the difference in temperature gets less and less, and the rate of, that it's cooling at gets less and less. As it gets closer to the temperature of the air around it, the rate gets lower and lower. Now, it's, it's called Newton's Law of Cooling, but it, it applies to, to warming as well. So if we take something cold out of the fridge here and leave it on the counter, the same relationship's gonna happen. The rate that this thing warms up is going to be directly related to the difference in temperature between this object and the air around it. Now, one thing to note before we move on here, uh, an assumption we're making with Newton's Law of Cooling is the, the room or surroundings are large enough that uh, they will cause the cup of water to cool down or this cold thing to warm up. But these things won't change the temperature of the room because it's large enough. Like if you had, uh, I don't know, some huge uh, pot of soup or something like that, and I, there's not really any soup in here, I'm just pretending. But if you had a large pot of soup and you had a, a small container you put it into, the surroundings there are small enough that the soup's going to heat the, or there's going to heat the room up as much as the room's going to cool down the, the soup. All right, so it has to be where the surroundings are not really going to change temperature. They're that much bigger than the, than the objects. If you express Newton's Law of Cooling as a differential equation, we're going to have that the rate of change of temperature, or dt dt, is equal to some constant times, not the temperature, but the difference in temperature. Temperature minus the temperature of the surroundings. That's the difference in temperature. Now, something we need to recognize here before we move forward is that dt dt is the same as dt minus ts dt. In other words, the rate of change of temperature is the same as the rate of change of the difference of temperature. You can show these are equal because it's two terms subtracted. So you can write the derivative separately, dt dt minus dt s dt. This is a constant. So its derivative is zero, and that disappears, and you're left with just dt dt. So we can write that over here instead, t minus ts dt equals constant times t minus ts. The reason that's going to be helpful is then because we can use a single variable, let's say d for difference, to be t minus ts, and in that differential equation, replace it so that we have just d d dt equals constant times d. So then this differential equation looks more like what you've seen before, where you have the rate of change of a quantity is proportional to the quantity itself. And you've solved these before, but we'll write it over here and go through it anyways. It's separable. You move the d over here, it becomes 1 over d, d, d. And then the dt can go to the other side, and you have k dt. If you integrate both sides, on the left, of course, you have ln absolute value of d, and on the right, you have kt plus some constant. Don't need a constant on both sides. We'll just combine them over here. So continuing along to isolate d, we can anti-log both sides, and we just have absolute value of d on this side, and we have e to the kt plus c over here, which gives us absolute value of d equals e to the kt times e to the c, adding exponents is like multiplying. We have absolute value of d equals e to the c times e to the kt. We'll just reverse it there to have e to the c at the beginning. 
Absolute value of D can just become D because that's always going to be positive. No need for absolute value. And that's equal to E to the C times E to the KT. Now we want to determine the E to the C. So if we put zero in here, that's going to give us one there. And this will lead to our D zero value, the value at the beginning. So one times E to the C is going to be equal to D zero. So E to the C is equal to D zero, the start value. So then in our solution, instead of e to the c, we can just write d0 times e to the kt. And that equation is the solution to that differential equation. Now the last thing is, remember that we used d instead of our difference up here in order to make that differential equation easier to work with. So we're going to substitute back now. For d, we had t minus ts and for d0 it's going to be t0 minus ts the initial difference times e to the kt we're going to move the ts over to the other side to isolate t and just have t is t0 minus ts times e to the kt plus ts and that's the equation we can use to solve some problems now so we have a situation here where we have a 31 degree drink and we're going to put it into a creek that is five degrees and let's think about what's going to happen here we have 31 degrees up here and then we have the ambient temperature of five degrees down here and as time goes by that temperature of 31 is going to drop down closer and closer to the five and slow down as it does we're going to use our equation that we found before and we're going to substitute in some values that we know, the 31 and the 5. And then we'll simplify it a bit to get 26e to the kt plus 5. Now, the thing is, we don't have this k value here. And to find it, we're going to use the fact that after 10 minutes, the drink has gotten down to 24 degrees. So if we substitute that in for time and temperature, we can solve for k. So we're going to put 24 over here and then we have 26 e to the k times 10 plus the 5 and then we can start to isolate k move the 5 over there we're gonna have 19 is 26 e to the we'll write it as 10 k we can divide by 26 on both sides so we have 19 over 26 is e to the 10 k now if we take the natural log of both sides then that cancels out and we're going to be left with ln of 19 over 26 on the left and just 10k on the right. Then we divide both sides by 10 and we end up with ln 19 over 26 divided by 10 is k. We'll look at a calculator and see what that is as an approximate value. Negative 0 0.031 and so on. So we can write k is roughly 0 0.031 and we can substitute it into our equation here and write t is roughly equal to 26 e to the negative 0 0.031 t plus 5. We could also write our original differential equation dt dt is roughly equal to negative 0 0.031 times t minus 5. That k value substituted in there. This is our solution equation with the k value in and this is our original differential equation with the value substituted in there. So two different equations to represent this. Now we're going to use that solution equation to solve some problems here. First one's going to be where we have a time and we're solving for the temperature. So we'll write our equation and then we'll take our given time here of an hour, which is of course 60 minutes, and we'll sub it in here for small t. And then we will evaluate this which will go to the calculator. Now first I'm going to save that k value in the calculator so I don't have to punch it back in and so that I don't run into rounding problems by rounding the value off early. So if I just put in 26e to the 60k plus 5 it gives me that value so about 8.96 or about 9 degrees Celsius as our temperature. Now we're going to solve one other thing here. Now in this situation we are given a temperature and we need to find the time that it's going to take to get to that temperature. So we'll write our equation again and we'll take our six degrees and we'll sub it in for temperature 
and then we're going to solve for time. First we'll move the 5 over, subtract it, we get 1, it's 26 e to the minus 0 0.031 t. Then if we divide by 26 on both sides, we get 1 over 26 e to the negative 0 0.031 t. Then if we take the natural log of both sides, we just have negative 0 0.031 t on this side, and then we have ln of 1 over 26 on the left. Then to isolate t, divide both sides, and we get ln of 1 over 26 divided by negative 0.031. Now, that's another thing we're going to evaluate on the calculator. And we get 103.87 roughly. So 103.87, or about 104 minutes, or 1 hour 44 minutes. That's our time. Now that's solving for those two things analytically. We're going to now turn to check things out graphically. So we'll use Desmos to check this graphically. We're going to put in our equation. We're going to use y and x. So we're going to put y equals 26 e to the negative 0.031x plus 5. And then have a look at our graph. We'll have to resize it here a little bit. So we'll move this over so we don't because we don't need the negatives. And then we'll have to squish it in a bit. Now we're going to put in here x equals 60 for 60 minutes and then look at what the y value is. If we click on that intersection point, now this has a y value of 9.05 basically, which is a little bit different than we had there. It's still about 9 degrees, but the difference is going to be because this k value here, I only put three digits of it in. If I put more digits of that in here, type the rest of at least some more anyways here, and then we check what our value is, that 8.96 is more what we had before. And then we'll check our other value that we found. This time, of course, we were looking for an x value that went with a y value of 6. So we'll put in y equals 6 and then have a look at the intersection point. It's a little bit farther to the right, so we'll have to squish the, the graph over here to see it. When we click on it, we get pretty close to what we had, 103.87. Not exactly what we had. The difference there would be, even though I put in a lot of digits of that k value, it isn't as much as that calculator kept, but it does confirm the value that we have. All right, so that's a look at using differential equations to represent Newton's law of cooling. Thank you.